Hi everyone, welcome to another video. In the last few years, we've seen an amazing number of new cameras, especially mirrorless cameras, come out onto the market. They've been a real transformation for wildlife photography, and I've been trying out two new cameras, the Canon R5 and the Canon R6, over the last little while, and I want to share my results with you about how I like these cameras and how they work for wildlife photography. Canon's come out with two great cameras with the R5 and the R6, but I know many of you are asking yourself, do I need to pay the extra amount to get the R5 over the R6? And is 20 megapixels in the R6 enough for wildlife photography? Over the last couple of months, I've shot between 20 and 30,000 images with these two cameras and shot over a terabyte of video. I'm gonna be sharing these results with you so that you can make a decision on which camera is right for you. I've shot birds, foxes, deer, and even humpback whales and Milky Way shots. I'm gonna be showing my comparison images with you so that you can make a good decision on which camera you'd like to buy. Let's start off by talking about the most important attribute a camera needs to have to be a good wildlife camera, and that's a great autofocus system. Both of these cameras have an amazing autofocus system, and as far as I can tell, they perform the same. The autofocus systems for both these cameras in both photo and video mode is amazing. The addition of eye auto detect that covers the entire sensor has been a game changer for my wildlife photography. Here's a photo of a mallard, which was the very first photo I took with my Canon R5. I was walking along, seeing this duck dunking his head underwater, and I knew it would stand up in the water and flap the excess water away. I got down low, pointed at the duck, and just hit the shutter button. The eye auto detect caught the eye of the duck, even if it was on the edge of the frame, and I got a wonderful shot. I knew then and there that this would be a game changer for me for my wildlife photography. A traditional DSLR with focus points in the center would have had me focus on the wing of the bird rather than the bird's head. Eye auto detect has been transformational for my photography. It works especially well on birds. Even if it can't find the eye, it'll find the head. Even if it can't find the head, it'll find the body. I've tricked it a few times by shooting uh, seals. For example, a gray seal with two black nostrils the camera may think that those are the eyes, but for the most part, it's really accurate, works really well, and makes having the bird's head in focus really, really easy. In summary, the autofocus on the R5 and the R6 seem to be identical, and they work great in both photo and video, with the eye detect being a great extra feature. Now let's talk about what I think is the second most important attribute of a wildlife camera, and that's having a high frame rate. That is, being able to take lots of photos per second. The mechanical shutter on the R5 and the R6 shoots 12 frames per second, which sounds like this. You can also shoot 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter, which I have done. It shoots at a slightly lower bit rate, so the quality of the files may be a little bit less, but it is very effective. Here you can see a series of photos shot at 12 frames per second with a mechanical shutter shooting a short-eared owl. In this series, they're all in focus, they're all sharp, and it gives me plenty of poses from which to pick to pick my favorite photo. I've never run into buffering issues with either of these cameras. That is, after taking a large number of photos, the camera's starting to stutter because it can't write the photos to the cards fast enough. Both of these cameras will shoot over five seconds at 12 frames per second, which is plenty of photos in a series to get some action. The R5 and the R6 do feel a little bit different in the hands. The R5 feels very solid, metal construction with a rubberized coating on the outside, Feels very much like my 5D Mark IV did, but a little bit less brick light because it's a little bit lighter and a little bit smaller. Feels really good in the hand, has a nice display on top to display some of your settings, and it also has a mode dial, which I very much enjoy for switching between settings, but it also doubles as my ISO or exposure compensation dial. You can also store custom settings using this, and the R5 also allows you to store custom video settings, which the R6 does not. I'll talk a bit about that later. The addition of the mode dial and the scroll wheel next to it means there are three scroll wheels on this body, which means you can set one for aperture, one for ISO or exposure compensation, and one for shutter speed. Having all three of those with dials that you can adjust on the fly makes this such a versatile camera for you being able to change your settings in the field, on the fly, without taking your eye out of the viewfinder. If we look at the feel of the R6 in the hand, it doesn't quite feel as solid in the hand. It feels a little bit more like a plastic body, like the 6D did compared to the 5D Mark IV. That doesn't affect performance though, just that it doesn't feel as solid in the hand. One great feature of the R5 as well with the mode dial is that it's electronic and some other buttons can be programmed to some of those functions. 
I've set up the R5 with a one button switch from video to photo, which I assigned to the multi-function button. Both cameras do have a red record button, which will start recording instantly if you're in photo mode, but I find the R5 system where I can set at one button switching and then switch the different types of stored video modes works much better for me. The R6 has a dial to switch from different photo modes and into video mode, but I find that this switching technique is not as fast as on my R5. Also to switch from manual all the way to video mode means moving the dial all the way around, which takes time. One challenge for video using the R6 is that you can't store custom video functions. You can store them for photo, but not for video. The ability to store custom functions for video on my R5 are very important for me when shooting video for wildlife. I've got one custom function set to 4K 120 for slow motion. I also have 1080p 4K and 24 frames per second normal speed video. When it comes to video, I do like the video features of the R5 more. It does shoot in 8K, but I've never used it, but I do love the 4K 120 to shoot slow motion 4K video. The R6 only shoots in 60 frames per second. Because the 120 frame per second slow motion footage on the R5 is in 4K, I find that I can crop in more in post-production. In shooting regular speed video like 24 frames per second, both cameras work great, including the autofocus during video. In terms of being able to adapt both of these cameras to my old EF lenses, like my 100 to 400 or my 500 f4, both of these cameras work equally well with those lenses, as well as my Sigma Arc 20 millimeter 1.4 lens that I use a lot for astrophotography. One other difference on these cameras is the card slots. The R5 takes a CF Express card as well as an SD card, and the R6 uses two SD cards. Expect to spend a little bit more on memory cards if you want to unlock all the features of the R5. For example, shooting 4K 120, you do need a CF Express card, and an SD card's not enough. The two cameras also have different EVFs. The EVF of the R5 is a higher resolution with almost 6 million pixels where the R6 has a little bit less than 4 million pixels. I do find the electronic viewfinder in the R5 is a little bit smoother and a little bit closer to what an optical viewfinder would look like. That being said, the R6 electronic viewfinder is a high quality viewfinder and works just fine. The LCDs are also a little bit different with the R5 LCD screen in the back just a little bit bigger than the R6, but this is something that Canon does really well, so the R6 LCD screen is still a very high quality LCD. The battery rating systems that show that these cameras can shoot three or 400 photos on a battery aren't really relevant to wildlife photography, where you shoot in multiple bursts and maybe not look at the back of the camera every photo. I find that I can often go out and shoot 2,000 photos on one battery. By the way, if you like this type of content, please give me a like and a subscribe. And also, I really try to answer all the questions in the comments below. If after watching this video, you still have some questions, put them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. Even though these cameras are very similar, they do have some differences and I've gone through some of those, but one of the big differences is in the sensor and that's where people really want to understand the difference between the R5 and the R6. The R5 has a 45 megapixel sensor and the R6 has a 20 megapixel sensor. Both of these cameras have image stabilized sensors which is a great feature for shooting in lower light. The big question many people have is, do I need the 45 megapixels of the R5 or is the 20 megapixels of the R6 enough? So let's look at a number of photos I've taken with both the R5 and the R6. Most of these photos are taken with 100 to 400 version two by Canon or the version two 500 millimeter F4. So let's start off by comparing these photos of the tails of humpback whales. The R5 is on the left, the R6 is on the right. If I zoom into 100% on the R5, you can see there's plenty of detail. You can see the water dripping off the tail here. If I zoom into 100% on the R6, you can see you can also see the water dripping off the tails. So you can also see the barnacles on the tail. Now note that when you zoom into 100% on the R5, it's a tighter zoom than on the R6 because it has more megapixels. On a target like this that's very large where you don't need to crop a lot, I would say both the R5 and the R6 have plenty of megapixels for a reasonable small crop and still have plenty of detail. If you have an extreme amount of zoom, you will see that the Canon R5 preserves more detail than the R6. This R6 is zoomed into 225%, where the R5 only needs to be zoomed to 135% to be about the equivalent amount of cropping. That being said, 
over 200% crop is not something that you would do, so don't use this to decide whether or not the R6 has the resolution that you would need. Now let's look at some photos of some white-tailed deer shot at ISO 1600. You'll see that zoomed to 100%, the R5 crops in quite a bit more than the R6. When uh, zoomed in right now, my R5 is zoomed in on the left at 146% and 213% zoom on the R6 on the right to get the equivalent. I can see here on the screen that the R5 is sharper, but the R6 holds up quite, quite well considering that I'm zoomed in at 200%. If I move this down to a more reasonable zoom of 100%, I find the detail is very, very good, and the noise performance is also very, very good as well. Both these photos look really, really good with the R5 just showing a little bit more detail when zoomed in quite a bit. Now let's look at these white-tailed deer photos shot after the sun had set. I'm again shooting at 700 millimeters with my 500 millimeter f4 with a 1.4 teleconverter, but I'm at ISO 10,000 on both of these photos. The Canon R5 is on the left, the Canon R6 is on the right. If I move them to equivalent amount of zoom at this very high ISO, I notice two things. Number one, the R5 does still have more detail, but the R6, because of its bigger pixels, is a little bit cleaner. In my experiences, the R6 is you know, three quarters of a stop to maybe one stop better in ISO performance. That being said, even though the R5 image is a little bit noisier, I can apply some noise reduction to it, which will reduce the resolution a bit, but it will give it an equivalent look to the R6. That is, it'll lose a bit of detail, but it'll get a similar amount of noise to the R6 if I apply some noise reduction. So I wouldn't say that the R6's 20 megapixels can be turned into an advantage for wildlife photography, but it is a bit of an equalizer at very high ISOs. If you look at these photos up in the darker areas, you'll see there's more noise when zoomed in. Right now I'm zoomed in at 100% uh, on the R5 and 146% on the R6. You will see that the R5 is noisier than the R6. So the R6 is a wonderful sensor, even though it's only 20 megapixels, the quality of the sensor is very good. And those larger pixels really improves the signal to noise ratio leading to cleaner images at high ISO. So basically when you're at ISO 10,000 shooting wildlife, you really don't want to be cropping a lot because the cropping really shows up your noise. You want to be trying to fill the frame as much as you can, like on this R6 shot or on this R5 shot. You really don't want to be cropping a lot and uh, you want to be keeping the frame uncropped, which will really improve uh, its look if it's noisy and shot at a very high ISO. Now let's have a look at these two Willet photos. Uh, they weren't shot at the same ISO. These were shot with my 500 millimeter F4 with a two time teleconverter at 1000 millimeters and shot wide open at F8. The ISO of the R5 is ISO 500. And the ISO of the R6 was ISO 160. They're not quite the same ISO, but they were shot at the same distance and both photos are very, very clean at these ISOs. So this is really a comparison of resolution. If I zoom them to 100%, you'll see that the R5, because of its higher resolution, will be zoomed in more than the R6. If I zoom the R6 to be the equivalent size, you may be able to see, I can see a little bit here on my monitor that the R5 has just a little bit more sharpness than the R6. The R6 here looks very, very good at uh, a zoom of 130%. This is very, very usable uh, and uh, would look really good uh, printed up almost at any size. If we zoom in to an extreme amount, which you would never do in processing your photos, but you can see here that the R5 has just a, a more detail uh, than the R6. But for the amount of zoom here, I'm at 260% on the R6 and 186% on the R5. It shows uh, just how much detail with a sharp lens that these sensor can capture. Let's take a look at these two Fox photos. They weren't shot on the same night, but they were shot with the same lens and at the same ISO of 5000. If we look at them at 100% at ISO 5000, you'll see that the uh, R5 on the left is maybe showing a little bit more noise on the in the background compared to the R6, 
but the R6 at ISO 5000 may be slightly underexposed. The noise is not too bad at all. At 100% crop, still have a good amount of detail. You can see though that the R5 does have more detail, even though it has more noise. You could apply some noise reduction and get rid of some of the noise in the background using uh, denoise or something like that, that would get rid of most of the noise in the background and still preserve the extra detail in the fur here that we have uh, on the R5 on the left. But they both look very, very good. Uh, very usable if not overly cropped, as you can tell at 100% zoom, I'm cropped in quite a bit. You would never crop that deeply. You know, you would, for cropping this photo on the left of the R5, you would select a crop something like this, which is at 26% crop, and with a little bit of noise reduction, this shows lots of detail uh, and uh, not a lot of noise at that crop. This photo on the right of the, uh, at the R6, again, you would not crop it too tightly. You, you might have a crop something like, uh, like this that looks very, very good. Uh, again, a little bit of noise reduction applied to the background would uh, clean up the background very well and still leave a lot of detail on the fox. As you can see, shooting foxes at high ISOs like 5000 is not uncommon in wildlife photography. You're often shooting early in the morning, late in the evening, and getting some high ISO performance is actually very important in wildlife photography, and both these cameras do really, really well. But like I mentioned, I think the IR6 does it just a little bit better on the ISO performance. So now let's look at some Milky Way photos. I shot these photos from the wharf at my cottage uh, at a very dark site and uh, shot at 15 seconds, f1.6 at ISO 3200. These are shot with a Sigma Art 20 millimeter f1.4 lens. Let's zoom into a 100%, see what we see here. At 100%, the R5 does indeed look noisier than the R6. That being said, the R5 is zoomed in more at this point than the, uh, than the R6. So uh, let's zoom the R6 into uh, an equivalent amount of, uh, of crop, which would be somewhere around this, which would be 253% compared to 180% on the R5 at this point. And they look very close. So I would say while the R6 is cleaner at 100%, when you zoom them in an equivalent amount, the R6 is ever so slightly cleaner than the R5. While some people believe that these lower resolution sensors uh, are cleaner, uh, in my experience, uh, shooting higher megapixel sensors for Milky Way photography still does work fine. You've got a little bit extra uh, resolution. You can apply a bit of noise reduction and still have the same amount of detail as a lower resolution sensor. So for all intents and purposes, I would say they're identical. So if I was out going to shoot some Milky Way photography and I was grabbing for a camera in my equipment room, I'd grab either the R5 or the R6 and it wouldn't make a terrible amount of difference for me. Now, after having applied a simple curves adjustment in Lightroom, it will show what the photo might look like a little bit more processed. So if we look at these uh, photos in comparison right now, uh, where the R5 on the left is at 180% zoom, on the right, the R6 at 250%, uh, they're looking pretty close to each other. Having applied a little bit of noise reduction uh, on the R5, uh, now they look very, very similar uh, to my eye. But again, these are, these are heavy crops. Uh, when you uh, back these off and uh, at full frame, both of these will make uh, very, very good photos. I also got to shoot some video of a Wimbrel using both the R5 and the R6. And I shot them in the highest resolution that they could shoot 120 frames per second slow motion which is one of my favorite things to shoot when shooting wildlife. For the R5, that would be 4K, and that would be 1080 for the R6. Here's a comparison of them. The R5 on the left, the R6 on the right, and then here I'll show the croppability of these two uh, frames so that you can see that the R5 preserves more detail when cropping in deeply. Now, if you're looking at these two cameras, the other thing you're gonna need to consider is the price. The Canon R5 goes for about $4,000 US and the R6 at about $2,500 US. 
There are some hidden costs though that the R5, you may need more storage. I've gone to 16 terabyte drives to, for the extra storage for the size of the video files. And of course the memory cards are more expensive as well if you buy the CF Express cards to take advantage of the more advanced video features that the R5 has. So what are my conclusions? I think both the R5 and the R6 are both amazing cameras and you can't go wrong with any choice. If you like to shoot targets where you're able to fill the frame with your subject, or you like to keep the subject small in the frame in wider compositions, the R6 is a fantastic camera and I've no doubt will fill your needs. If you need a true hybrid camera where you're switching from video to photo very often and you like the advanced video features and the fast switching and the ability to store custom functions for video, the R5 is a better hybrid camera for that purpose. It allows switching to video much more quickly from photo mode, has advanced video features, higher resolution, and the ability to store custom functions for video sets is a great idea. If you crop deeply in your photos, I would say that the R5 is a better choice, but not mandatory. For 20 megapixels, the R6 does a great job and you can crop in quite a bit. Although the R5, if you shoot small targets like warblers and small birds and like to crop in deeply, will do a better job than the R6. And also I should point out that some of the issues I raised about the R6 in that the LCD or the EVF might not be the same caliber as the R5, that's only issues because it's compared to the R5, which are class leading. I would say the R6 on its own, many of the feature sets are very, very good and you won't notice any difference if it's the only camera that you pick up. So the R6 is a great wildlife photography camera. It's a great choice. It has an amazing autofocus system. It has a great frame rate. These are more important than the megapixel count and the sensor is a great sensor for a 20 megapixel sensor. The R6 is a great choice. The R5 though is a worthy upgrade. The increasing price is made up with great features, advanced video features, easier switching, more megapixels, and a better build quality and weather sealing. The R5 is a worthy upgrade, but the R6 is a great camera on its own. And to answer the big question, is 20 megapixels enough? I was pleasantly surprised how well I could do with 20 megapixels and the types of photos I got and the ability to crop in at 20 megapixels with a very sharp lens, I was quite impressed. I think 20 megapixels can do enough for many, many people. And thanks for joining me. If you like this type of content, please don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel. We'll see you guys the next time.